Our next guest is a medical practitioner who uses his platform to break down health communications for the understanding of the layman. With over 400,000 followers on Twitter, let's make welcome Dr. Chinosu Egemba, popularly known as Aproko Doctor. Hey. Thank you. Hi. Happy married life, or should I say happy ha married Zoom life? <laughs> <laughs> How does that make sense? Well, I think it should going forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think so too. It's, it's like a way of life now. How was the preparation for that one? easier than mm. the first one right and um, because you know we had we had like a guest list of about 500 people for the first oh, one wow. uh, but this was just like about 20 mm. and i just shared the zoom link and that's the that and that's it yeah wow I, before we brought you in we were kind of talking about proposals and i'm sure you saw all that oh, yeah, how then, was your proposal okay so my proposal was private mm. Um, she asked me to get food for her. <laughs> I like her. <laughs> and I did. And on my way, I got, um, I had always wanted to get the ring, so I got the ring and I placed it in the box of food and I just dropped it on the table. And she sat down and was eating. <laughs> and I was like, what's this box? And opened it and I was like, are you going to marry me? Or would hmm. you marry me? And she first ran out <laughs> and ran back in. Yeah, she's, she's very bubbly. Yeah. Yeah. Ran out, ran back in, but it was just the two of us. And oh. So what's your thoughts on public display? Well, before you the that the decision to propose that way, was it your decision or it, it came from a conversation you, you've had with her over time about proposal? Um, so, how do I put this? Um, I'm a very private person. Most people don't believe me when I say that mm -hmm. <laughs> because I of, know. yeah, um, I'm a very private person and um, I've seen a lot of public disgrace mm. in quotes. Not that I was expecting it, but you know, when the cameras are on, you really cannot tell how, the, how a person would react. And it's there, it's there. You're never going to erase that memory away. And I didn't want to place, you know, so much pressure mm. on her. I wanted it to be something that, you know, she would think about. Because, you know, when everybody's around and you're proposing, there's always that, okay, there are other people, I don't want to disgrace him, I don't, I don't sure. feel like him, so I mm. really need to be sure. And sometimes they just say yes to save you that shame. Sometimes mm. they mean it, but I just think a public proposal, a private proposal is better for me. Mm -hmm. I don't want to use the word for So it was your body. decision? So it was my decision. Of course. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> of I course. think you've answered her question as well. Um, but um, let's talk medical, the medical situation in Nigeria, the health sector. Comedian Sheila, we talked about this yesterday. He was mourning, or he's still apparently mourning his aunt who had an accident and died due to lack of equipment. And um, he called on the governor to do things better. Just take a look at this video so we can get a better perspective. Your Excellency, Marissa wrote me a Dolu. This is not a fight with you. It is just stating the truth. This morning, my mom's yoga sister had an accident and they didn't have the right equipment to take care of her at the general hospital in the Bokoda. And in just some few minutes, she's been pronounced dead just because she fractured her neck in an accident. Please, please, let's do the right thing. Oh, super deck. Please. So that's quite emotional, like yeah. I said yesterday. Um, but I think for me, I have two questions. Um, one would be, what kind of equipment is really needed to take care of a fractured leg? And then secondly, what is the possibility of a person dying from a fractured leg? Okay, so I'm going to try to explain it. First of all, we're focusing on the fracture. Mm. when it may not be the fracture that killed her. Um, when, a when a fracture happens, especially that far away from the heart and the brain, 
um, people tend to ask, but it's a fracture on the leg. Why should it kill the person that fast? That sometimes when a fracture happens, there's a blood clot that could leave that because when a, when a bone is fractured, there are also blood vessels surrounding that bone mm. that you know would also be torn and all that. There's every possibility that a blood clot mm. would have left the um, left those vessels and went straight to the lungs and blocked something or blocked the heart, and then she dies in a matter of minutes, mm. sometimes in a matter of seconds. Oh, wow. Now it takes a hospital. There are certain hospitals known as trauma centers, and I don't think we have up to 10 of them in Nigeria oh wow. my God. as we speak. Wow. So I can understand, um, I mean, yeah, I, I can understand where he's coming from, but the, the Nigerian healthcare system needs an overhaul. Hmm. First of all, there are three levels of healthcare. There's a primary healthcare, the secondary, and there's tertiary. You go to tertiary centers and you hear things like, oh, I couldn't find a bed space in a teaching hospital. It shouldn't happen. Hmm. And that's because most people leave the primary and the secondary healthcare centers and flock to the tertiary healthcare centers because these first two centers are not enough to help sort their health problems. They're not equipped enough. They don't have the necessary equipment. They don't have the um, necessary expertise to help or solve people their don't health care. Or people don't even trust them. Sometimes they're not, they not even in um, um, a, a good enough state. During this um, COVID-19 pandemic, everyone was sharing pictures of primary healthcare centers from other places. And there were some I saw, and it was so dilapidated that you can't even raise a peak in that place. And that's a primary healthcare center. Hmm. So you need those primary healthcare centers to be up and running. That's where the malaria cases go to. That's where the um, typhoid fever goes to. That's where the um, diabetes checkup goes to. That's where the hypertension cases go to. And then when you have complications, you move them up mm. until they get to primary healthcare centers. And then you don't have trauma centers. So a person who is involved in an accident will probably have, there's always a chance of pul um, pul um, pulmonary embolism. That's what I mentioned earlier. So a clot leaves and either blocks the heart or blocks the lungs and all that. Now. On transit to the hospital, first of all, which hospital are you going to? General hospital. Those are the questions that need to be answered. Which hospital are you going to? The hospital you're going to, are they prepared for you? Mm. Do they know you're coming? Sometimes people don't know. So they just say, ah, let's take them to the hospital. And then they rush to this first hospital. And this hospital says, no, we can't handle this case. And then they start rushing to the person to the next hospital. And the next hospital says, no, we can't handle. Send to the teaching hospital. And the, before they're doing that, that's time lost. Mm. I think we have a lot of such case. <laughs> and yeah. maybe we need to begin to educate ourselves on it, the kind of... Yeah. But I, I didn't want to... This is not... Um, a science, a health um, <laughs> show. I, I personally even want to bring that because I know there's a lot when it comes to the health um, care in Nigeria. Our health, us, the system, the government, the equip like it's a lot. Why did you pick social media as a fighting tool for all of that? Okay, so um, I realize that when it comes to practices, most people spend about an average of four hours a day on social media. Um, very few people would use the internet to search for health information, except they have that problem yeah. or someone else has that problem. And by that time, it's almost too late because they need to be able to prevent these health complications. And so I decided to take the information to where they spend the most of their time, which is social media and not just sharing it, but sharing it in a way that they can understand. And I also remember most, most people, when they hear a good doctor, they tend to laugh. Mm. And that's because we remember things that are associated with certain emotions. You remember things more when you're angry, when you're sad. You're probably never going to forget this shade video. Mm. For example, you're never going to forget it, but you're going to forget tons of other videos. Mm. Mm. but you're not going to forget this video simply because of the emotion that's involved in it. So our brains are wired that way. That was why I decided to use social media with a touch of humor mm. to thank be able to... Okay. Oh, thank you Thank you, really. And unfortunately, we have to go. But very quickly, we're battling a pandemic and mm. everyone is scared, doing what they can. Even those with other kind of sicknesses cannot get the medical um, attention they need. 
what message do you have for them very quickly before we go? Okay, so um, first I would say do not panic, but be extremely cautious. Okay. A lot more people have it now than, um, than we think. Yeah. It's very common now, so there's community spread. So when it comes to washing your hands, you need to take that very important. When it comes to wearing your face mask, that is almost like the most important of them all. So mm -hmm. wash your hands, use your face mask, av avoid crowded places, and mm -hmm. you should be fine. Thank you so Thank much you for so drinking much. tea with us. It's my pleasure. <laughs> we hope to have you again soon because there's so much to talk about when oh, it comes to health. Definitely, definitely. Uh,